So over the past week or so, I've had proper writer's block. So today what I'm going to do is produce using a reference track. And I want to do two things in today's video. So firstly, I want to show you how you can learn from, get inspiration from, or just straight up plagiarize from a reference track. And the second thing I want to show you, or I want to try and do today anyway, is right from the moment that I start playing in notes on my keyboard, I want my track to be able to stand up to this fully mixed and fully mastered reference track without me having to do any kind of complicated mixing or mastering whilst I'm trying to produce. So if that kind of thing sounds interesting to you, then you're definitely in the right place. So let's just get into it. Okay, so in essence, this is going to be a follow up video to the video I put out a few weeks ago where I learned about and used Baphometric's clip to zero method for the very first time on a mix. Now, in that video, there was a few things that I still wasn't entirely sure of. And basically, I had already made that track from start to finish and I was applying this clip to zero method at the final mixing stage. And that's not really how this method is supposed to be implemented. You're supposed to implement it right from the get go. So today I'm going to show you how I have incorporated this clip to zero method within my production workflow and how I've got everything set up in Cubase and with my controllers just so everything's very quick and very easy. And I'm not having to put too much effort into doing anything. I can just straight up create and have fun. Now the caveat to that is that in order to get to a stage where we can use this clip to zero method so quickly and easily while we're producing is that you have to set it up in advance. Now according to Google, Abraham Lincoln said here, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I would spend the first 45 minutes sharpening my axe. And that's basically what we're doing here. But in Cubase, you only have to sharpen your axe once and you can save it as a template, which is what I've got here, my template 2022. So if open it, you can see I've got a blank project with a few things already loaded into it. So I've got these various folder groups set up. If I open up the drums, obviously inside you can see I've got drums. These have just got drum synths loaded into them. And some inserts which we'll talk about in a second. And I've also got a reverb loaded in there. In the bass folder. I have instrument channels that don't actually have instruments loaded up on them, but they do have inserts and quick controls loaded in. One for sub, one for bass, and the output of those two are both being fed into this bass bus, which also has some inserts on it. In my harmony folder, I've got remedy two and scalar two, and just an empty instrument channel. Melody, again, just an instrument channel. Vocal, I've got an empty audio channel that has inserts loaded up onto it. Then I've got my loop cloud so I can grab samples and then all of my buses. Now if I load up the mixer, you can see as I scroll along on the left hand side, you can see all of the instruments. And on the right hand side, we can see some buses, but not all of my buses. So first one I've got is my kick and bass and what's going into there is the output of my kick drum and the output of my bass bus. So remember my bass bus has been fed by my sub and my bass. Next I've got a drum bus being fed into the drum bus is the snare, clap, hat, probably the snare reverb and any other drums that I'm going to add that are not the kick. Uh, from there I've got a drums and bass bus and the output of the kick and bass and the drum bus are being fed into this channel here. Next I've got my harmony bus and basically what I feed into here is any synthesizer or instrument that is playing chords I generally root into the harmony bus. For my melody bus, any synth or instrument that I have that is just playing single notes, I will then root into this one that I call melody bus. I need a better name for it because it's not always melodies, but single notes, 
monophonic synth, that kind of thing. Then I have a synth bus. And the synth bus is basically the sum of the harmony bus and the melody bus. So I'm sending the melody bus and harmony bus into the synth bus. I've then got an instrument bus. And the instrument bus is being fed by the drums and the bass and the synth bus. So that's what the instrument bus is. This is basically my whole instrumental. I then have a vocal bus. So whatever vocals I have, samples or actual singing or rapping or whatever, they all get sent to my vocal bus. And then I have a master bus and the master bus is being fed by the instrument bus and the vocal bus. So this is basically my output. That gets sent to my stereo out, but let's just ignore my stereo out because I have to do things to it to be able to screen record. So just ignore my stereo out. This is my stereo out. Now in Cubase, we can have three different mix consoles. So my mix console one is this. It's basically just this mixer enlarged. But I've also set up a second mix console and if we look in this one on the left hand side now we don't have all the instruments instead we have some extra buses that weren't present in the main mix console this is just to keep things nice and neat so in here i have a snare bus and the snare bus is basically being fed by the snare and the clap i like to sum those together put them into a group and then i have top bus so this is going to be all my hi-hat symbols any top loops will be sent to this bus and then have a percussion bus so all percussions will be sent to that and then the output of these are what i send to the drum bus here i can then see my bass bus which is what's been sent to my kick and bass and then I just have the rest of my buses here so this mixer is basically a bus mixer when I just want to look at the buses and not the actual instruments. So I do have a stream deck down here. So I can just access these two different consoles. And it's all very convenient, nice and easy. Now I've pretty much got all of these channels set up the same. A few little differences on them, but they are more or less the same. So if I click on edit, you can see that on my kick channel, I've got two inserts. This one is my EQ. And the second one is Saturate by Newfangled Audio. And you can see I have some quick controls loaded in here. Now for this process to be as super smooth and super simple as I have it, you really do need some kind of MIDI controller with either 8 rotary dials or A sliders. Like you can't technically do all this with a mouse, but Doing it with a controller will just make things a million times quicker, smoother, easier, just more natural feeling. So I'm using the Panorama P1 and it actually has a button for quick controls. So you just click on it and then whatever channel you have highlighted in Cubase without having to open up the plugin or even look at your quick controls, you've got instant access to whatever you have saved in there. Now anybody who's seen any of my previous videos on quick controls will know that I use the Panorama P1 and my quick controls as basic gain staging whilst I'm producing. So just getting everything to be at the right level so that I can hear it properly and I can be inspired by whatever sound I'm playing along with. And the way that I've implemented Baphometrics clip to zero philosophy, I guess, is to basically use Saturate by Newfangled Audio as a fancy gain stager. Right, so that's the setup. I'm sorry if that bit was a bit long and boring. We are going to get on to making music right now, but once you set things up, you can just save it as a template and it's always going to be there to your liking. Now, me personally, I'm always changing my template and tweaking it as I go along because my Production is very fluid. The way I do things changes all the time as I learn new things. Oh, I start enjoying walking down different avenues, whatnot. You know what I mean. But anyway, what I'm saying is this is the way that I am making music right now. Six months time, it might be completely different. 
So don't take anything that I'm saying as this is what you should do. I'm just saying this is what you can do if you want to have your music somewhat stand up to music that you purchase from a professional. So let's start by bringing in this reference track. And I'm going to be using this David Penn remix of The Weeknd by Haji and Emmanuel. I can't play the whole thing because I get done for copyright, but I'll play a few seconds of it. So it's a kind of funky house track with this kind of Reese bass thing going on in the background. So I'm just going to grab the MP3, drag it into Cubase, and then I'm going to go to Studio, Audio Connections, go to Control Room. So I'm going to right click and go to Add Cumix. I'm going to call it Reference. I'm going to make sure that I've got QSense enabled. And then in QSense, activate the first slot. And then take this out of stereo out. So if I just play the project, you can hear that we don't hear the reference track. But if we click on this button here, C1 which is our cue, you can hear that we can hear it. So that means we can just quickly switch between the track that we're producing and the reference track. So I want to set this up as a key command. So I'm going to go to key commands, type in source, and then under select control room source, I'm going to just create a key command, assign it, and now I can just press a button to switch between them. So the first thing I want to do is get a kick drum. So let me just draw in a four to the floor kick. So the first thing we're going to hear is extreme difference in volume between my kick, which is coming out of Beat Designer by UVI, and the reference track. The first thing I want to do is get a better kick drum. I'm going to go through some of the presets. And what I want to do is clip this to zero. So the way I've got this set up is that my controllers are mapped to all of these things I'm about to do right now. But just so I can explain everything properly, I'll do it using the mouse. And then I'll show you how I've got everything set up so I can do everything really quickly. So my first insert is an EQ, which I'm not going to worry about right now. I'm just going to go straight to saturate by newfangled audio now i did buy this plugin with my own money however it is available on plugin boutique so check my link in the description below it's an affiliate link which means it doesn't cost you anything extra to buy and i do get a little bit of commission off it it's a really cheap plugin and i use this plugin on every single channel like for me it's a kind of can't live without kind of plugin but anyway, the first thing I want to do is just play my kick drum through it. So I'm going to press play. And we can see on the input meter here that the kick is peaking at minus 10.2. I'm going to double click, type that in. And now you can see the Kick is peaking at about 0, 0 0.1. Maybe we can bring this down. So I'm not going to explain the science or the theory behind clip to zero. Go to Baphometrics channel for that. Full in-depth explanations over there. What I'm just here to show you is how we can implement this quickly in production. So, so once we're clipped to zero, I'm going to click on the meter type, change it to waveform. And you can see it gives us a visual representation of the amplitude of the kick drum. So it starts off very loud and then goes very quiet. And here we have the 0 dB line, as in the loudest that this kick drum is going to go. And you see it's nicely touching 0. So now what we can do is use the drive dial to drive this signal. And for some reason I've just noticed that my output is at minus 1.9 so let's 
change that to zero before we start. And let's drive the signal now. So I'm just going to drive it up to the point where I can hear it and then pull it back a bit. And now if we compare this kick against the reference track. We can hear it is at a similar loudness level and we can now clearly hear how weak our kick drum sounds in comparison to the original. Not weak as in terms of loudness, but weak as in terms of the actual sound. So now that we can hear that clearly, we can go in and start finding a kick drum that works. And so I found this preset Kit Kick Electronica. And to me, it sounds like it stands up pretty well to the reference track. So now that I've found a kick drum I like, I'm just going to repeat this process. So I put the input back to zero, reset the meters, reset the drive. Let's say in 7.4. And again, use the drive to see how loud we can go. So now the level of the kick room is set, is as loud as it is in our reference track. Let's talk about the routing. So you can view the routing in Cubase by clicking this button here, show output chain. And I've got the kick going into the kick and bass. So on the kick and bass channel, just got a saturate, everything's set to zero. And because the output of my main kick channel was a zero, this should be doing nothing right now. The kick and bass has been sent to the drums and bass. Again, same deal. Got saturate on there, everything set to zero. And that's been fed to the instrument bus. Again, saturate on there. And that's been sent to the master bus. And the first thing on there is saturate. Do have some other things on there, but let's not worry about that right now. So now that my kick is set, obviously everything that I add from here has to match it in terms of loudness and power and whatnot. So I'll show you how I've got this set up with my controller, which speeds up this process a lot. Draw in some snares. So with my snare channel selected, so my controller, if I click on insert, go to saturator, Press view, and see it comes up on my screen. And then I'm gonna go down, select my quick controls. So I have this set to my output, this one to my input. This one is my drive. This one's my clipper shave. I can use this one to switch between meter types. And this one is actually set to the low cut on the EQ, which is on insert one. And you can see on my controller, I can actually see what frequency I'm cutting at. And what this means is I've now got full access to Saturate and my EQ without even actually having to open up the plugins. And now I'm just going to browse through the library on Drum Designer, find a snare that works. So let's just look for a snare. And straight away this one kind of feels like it works, especially in the context of the reference track. So I'm just going to repeat this process for the rest of the drums.
All right, so I want to add some samples. So here's another thing you can do to speed up the whole workflow. And that is use track presets. So you see, I've got an empty audio here. If I load it in, you can see, got my inserts loaded in and my quick control. So I've got quick access to it on the controller. Just make sure when you do add a new channel that you route it to the right place. So my shaker, I'm gonna go to my top bus and my percussion and to my perk bus. Once you've got sounds you're happy with, just go in and make sure that each saturator is running at its optimal level. So just make sure that the peak is coming in at zero so that you can do all your driving manual. If you're peaking at above zero, which you can do, and saturate will clip anything that goes above zero on the input. However, you don't have the same control if that makes sense, as you do if you put everything in at zero and then just use this to drive. So let's do a comparison between my beat and the beat on this track that I got on Beatport. And as you can see, it was very quick and easy and we can really compare apples to apples. The reference track is a little bit more bassy and the drums are a lot dirtier. Now I could add that right now and start getting into mixing, but that's not what I'm about today. I just want to create. Right, so let's find a bass. Right, so I quite like this one, Reese's Monkey Business. Put it in the track. But then when I compare it against the reference, can hear there's about a million times more bass in the reference. I'm going to drive the input until we're peaking at about zero. And now I'm going to use the output to match the volume of this bass against the reference track. And now I can try driving it. And this is introducing a lot of distortion, but on this sound, I quite like it. And now you can see I have my bass literally coming in 6 dB quieter than my kick drum, but it's still standing up to it, and it's standing up to the reference track as well. We can hear the reference track has a lot more subs, so let's copy this bass over onto my sub channel let's go to the base bus add some duck into that Nice, so I found this vocal. If I could live again, my life. I've just put all this together really quickly, no mixing, no mastering, really. So if this is what this is sounding like now, right at the creation stage, 
imagine how good it could sound once it's been mixed and everything has been looked at meticulously. Let's do the comparison. Right, so I think I'm going to leave it there for now. As always, thanks for watching through. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for the Patreons. If you liked it, thumbs up, all that kind of thing. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. I'm going to make some loud music. Peace.